a few days ago uh, on the 10th of November I put up a video along with a few others um, an older video and this video is titled how your fear has given life imprisonment to all of your alter egos now we could call alter egos spirits and I often refer to our alter egos as spirits because they are so when we have um, like schizophrenic patients they are said to have numerous alter egos they slip in and out of different characters and when you listen to these people or when you see movies really um, uh, depicting what actually is going on inside a schizophrenic mind when they actually dress in a particular way when they are um, exhibiting uh, that particular alter ego um, it's very bizarre and so most certainly they are spirits that um, um, express themselves via the human being and I've been saying for a long time now that um, as we go through life we gather up spirits and um, uh, those of us who have had more um, nuanced lives would gather up more varying spirits those of us that lead very very dull uh, mediocre lives then spirits are not that interested um, but what you would find in those mediocre lives uh, is the fear spirit is the drug um, addicted spirit um, those sort of low level uh, spirits whereas if you are uh, somebody that has global travel and lots of interests then you'd get different varieties of spirits coming along for the ride and so lots of people probably um, don't get their heads around um, that level of um, discourse, imagination, consciousness but um, there's doubtless some of you out there do and there are many people and have been many people that um, have thought in this sort of way um, because uh, when we look deeply into uh, what we really are we will see that we're not just this one thing when we become psychoanalytical we can see that the ego is just the operating system there's something behind that and then what we realize is that the energy uh, of the body um, coupled with the brain and consciousness um, we call that the soul but over and above the soul there is something that doesn't actually engage or need the body to operate it's just their spirit and um, many people would think that they only have one spirit and if you read the Bible then the Bible will explain the difference between the soul and the spirit um, and um, you know there's there's different um, perceptions of, of soul and spirit and there's um, a person in the comments uh, today um, and yesterday speaking about the soul and expressing um, seemingly like he knew absolutely positive uh, what the soul was and you know its existence and this that, and the other and of course you know we can never be positive about these things and the only people likely to be positive about these things are people like Christians who just have blind belief and faith because they've been told something um, and uh, so I was listening to another video last night who was speaking uh, about um, when we uh, take DMT and um, we look at a laser beam and someone's worked out that if you uh, have a projection of a laser beam in a cross um, then you think you take DMT and then you can actually see by you know um, nuanced ways of observing um, behind the laser beam you, you can see uh, the binary of the cosmos and you can see that this is a natural factor simulation um, so um, if anybody's interested in that you can go to the channel which um, is uh, 
uh, Dan go to thought Dan go to thought um, and uh, you can see videos about that one of the viewers recommended uh, that channel to me so thank you very much uh, very interesting I didn't know that um, but uh, yeah, getting back to the whole um, soul thing and the whole spirit thing, well, that's very, very complex and very uh, in-depth. And uh, for those of you that are interested, um, I wrote about it extensively in my book, what my conclusion of the soul and the spirit is, what the Bible says the soul and the spirit is, and what um, you know various other perspectives of the soul and spirit are. Because, um, of course, there's so much variance and, and nuance to all of this stuff and uh, what we have to do ultimately we we would be wise to go on our own subjective experience of what these things are rather than just listening the believing um, so bearing in mind then that there are all these different agencies within the body that constitute uh, a living human experience uh, most people have no awareness outside of their ego uh, the human operating system that's all they will ever know for th throughout their whole lives they'll never um, realize and really have a relationship with the soul which is the essence of their body in an entirety it, 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 it encompasses the ego it encompasses encompasses is the functionality of the body it encompasses the brain and the, and, and the psyche um, to uh, a degree uh, the soul uh, is the thing that feels and expresses and and uh, lives and enjoys and loves and hates all that sort of thing um, but you know it seems to me very very reasonable and feasible and logical that when the body dies the soul doesn't continue because why would the soul continue um, why would it need to, to um, continue with all of these emotions and memories and feelings that the body has gathered up um, through its sojourn on earth? Uh, and if people say, oh no, it doesn't take those, then, then I think you're misconstruing soul with spirit, because it's my estimation that the spirit doesn't uh, pertain to all these feelings and emotions and everything. The spirit is just like the, 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 the light in the light bulb, it just gives, um, um, no, 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 let me, let me make this absolutely plain. We, we could say that the spirit is the ultimate light, uh, the light of the cosmos, uh, the only thing really in existence, because when you delve into all this deep esoteric stuff, um, it always speaks about the light coming out of the darkness. And so the light is spirit, uh, which then uh, manifests consciousness, which then manifests a soul, which then manifests an ego, you know, and it's, it's, it's this tiered system. Ultimately, we've got light, we've got spirit, we've got consciousness consciousness um, but that just is a isness and it, it, it doesn't pertain to human experience um, the it needs to create another essence uh, another sub hierarchical system to experience and so it creates the soul which then creates the, the ego and the human body and everything like that um, so just within um, a small video um, it's difficult to really uh, place all this stuff before you uh, but like I say I've wrote about it in my book for those of you that are interested and those of you that have um, read the book you, you might want to go back and concentrate on some of these things um, because there's so many very very deep profound things in that book that unless people really think about these things and apply themselves then they'll just read it on a superficial level and uh, they won't gain anything from it and that's why people can read the book and go oh yeah it's kind of all right it's a bit interesting it's, it's really really very very deep and profound uh, for those who will engage themselves in a level of experience for those who have had experience uh, and have intellectual 
intellectualized and you 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 have um, considered what the soul is what the spirit is what the ego is when you've done lots and lots and lots of research uh, into these things and you've looked introspectively to to find these things to distinguish one from the other when you've done that then you'll have something to say about it um, but until you've done that then you won't and you'll just think oh soul yeah everyone's got one spirit yeah well, it's the same thing as soul uh, ego it's when people just think they're great like that awakened brave guy who's got ego um, you know but um, th th there's so much more to all these things people Anyway, the crux of this video uh, is pertaining to um, our spirits and to our soul and um, ultimately the, the ego. And, and so, you know, from a psychoanalytical perspective um, or from a psychiatric perspective, um, these professionals will only speak to you about the ramifications of the body with all of the nuances which you know create the body with the um uh, the brain mechanism and, and the body mechanisms and the chemistry and the biology and the neurons and all this different sort of thing, they create a, a living experience, don't they? With the senses and the emotions and the feelings and the pain and the anguish, all that sort of stuff. It derives out of the thoughts created by the ego and then they're passed on to the body um, with, with all the chemistry and biology, which also is encompassed with the soul. And so all these things are having these experiences. And um, I've, you know, so often spoken about um, having spirits enter into us um, which uh, want to partake in the human experience in whatever shape or form. And they can come as negative and they can come as positive. Um, and uh, when you are a more refined uh, level of consciousness, then you'll be absolutely aware when these spirits come and when they go. Um, and again, I've written about many facets of this in my book. And um, so there's, there's so many deep avenues to contemplate and to try to, to work through to get to the, 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 the length and breadth and depths of what we are as, uh, as experiential beings. But um aside from all of that which is you know very very deep and profound um onto itself i want to speak about um something that is reasonably topical um and that is um you know why i do these rants and because i keep getting comments saying you know why do you do these rants you know if you're trying to help people or do you hate people um or you know what, what is it that you, you're trying to do and in view of the fact that um uh, uh, my viewers are not mind readers. I don't uh, envision having too many mind readers on this channel. Then um, the questions that you pose as to why I do these things, because it is perplexing, it is a bizarre thing for sure. I don't know anybody else that does it, but I do it for a very um, uh, good reason. I do, I do it for lots of reasons. Uh, we, we don't do anything for one reason. Um, one of the reasons I do it is because I'm exercising, exorcising, I am, I am releasing, uh, from my body um, the, the, the shadow aspects of what it is to be a human being because if I don't release my shadow aspects if I keep all the shadow aspects in like many people do because they've been told that they're not socially acceptable then they will keep hidden in all of their things and all of their opinions we're not even allowed to pass our opinions these days are, are we so that's why the human psyche is building up a massive fermenting um, uh, unconscious uh, shadow and the shadow is what Carl Jung uh, discerned to be the things that are not acceptable uh, to other people to society and the things that you don't even want to accept about yourself if you're a bigot, if you're a racist, if you're hateful, uh, if you're jealous, all these things, we bury them, we bury them, and we pretend we're not them. Um, and this is why I'm always uh, referencing Alexander Solzhenitsyn uh, when he wrote that evil runs through the heart of every man and woman, because it does. 
it's just a thing, people. Uh, but most people want to bury it, they want to deny it. And Carl Jung says the last thing uh, in the world that anybody will want to do is to realise their shadow, to look inside at the deficit um, that they could be deemed to have um, from their fellow men. Uh, but if truth be known, you know, these things are not deficits, they pertain to us all. It's just that uh, through our personal evolution we've realised that lots of things are not really um, conducive to living together um, because they pertain to all these negative facets of hate and jealousy and manipulation and you know all that sort of stuff so we've got all this stuff going on people and this is why many many of you out there are suffering and you're ill and you speak about being depressed and addicted and you speak about you know this life being a living hell and the sooner you can end it the better and all this sort of thing and uh, you know goodness me uh, I've met so many people in my life the vast majority who are troubled souls and uh, again it's for many many reasons uh, too vast and too deep to speak about in one video um, I, you know when anyone says something to me um, about um, oh can you talk about this or can you talk about that I don't think many people are aware that I've been doing these YouTube channels uh, for about 15 years uh, and on this channel alone there is about 850 videos uh, so when you come upon one video and another video, then realise that it's like walking on a beach and just picking up a grain of sand. And uh, so, you know, if you're in doubt of um, uh, any of the subject matter that I've broached, then just use the, the search bar on my channel, uh, put keywords in and see what comes up. Now, uh, I don't use clickbait with, with any of my um, video titles. Uh, they're all pretty esoteric because I don't want to attract uh, clickbait people, the simpleton that, you know, uh, 10 ways to know how you are this or 10 ways to do that and you know all that sort of nonsense um, so you know the closest I'll get uh, to explaining what's in the video is in this particular video and I've changed the actual thumb for it I, I've put like um, a clip art picture a photo uh, it's got an earth on it with with like um, a, a chain and a shackle to it it's like a ball and chain your fear is a ball and chain because this video only so far has got 89 hits uh, and four comments and it's a really really important video so I've had to change the uh, the thumb from uh, the one that Google gave me as a su suggestion which was just the, the waves washing on the beach right some of you would have seen that uh, because Google gave me three um, options and they're all uh, just uh, the waves washing on the beach because I spoke as I was walking in the water's edge now this video again it says how your fear has given uh, life imprisonment to all your alter egos all of the fantasies and all of the spirits and all of the things you'd love to be you'd love to be an actor you'd love to be a musician you, you'd love to travel the world you'd love to be popular you'd love to be a public speaker and all these sort of things are alter images spirits within you that are just crying out craving to do these things but you keep them suppressed why because of fear people because of fear and um, fear is a life killer. Fear will kill your life. Now, maybe I, I need to put that down. Now, I've got to make a note of that um, because um, I think that will be the, the title. Fear will kill your life. And if that doesn't attract people's attentions, well, I don't know what would, to be fair. And I think, you know, whenever there's fear in the title, uh, that word strikes fear into you. And so you don't want to watch it subliminally, right? You move on. This is the unconscious facet of what we are. Uh, without you realising, if you see fear in the title, uh, you will instantly be afraid. You will think that that's going to induce more fear within you. And Lord knows you've got enough fear uh, within you so you quickly skip on over that one because you don't want to learn about the fear but if you don't learn about the fear if you don't learn how your ego generates fear then you'll never know how to overcome it you'll never know how to kill your fear people so what we have to do is face our fears face our demons we really do every time we feel a little bit anxious or a little bit afraid we have to face these things otherwise we will never grow 
Now, when we take entheogens, psychedelics, it's a classic for the ego to become afraid, to present anxiety to us because it knows that it's going to be out of sorts. But what we then, as a conglomerate of soul and spirits, have to do, we have to override the spirit, uh, the, the, the ego. We have to say, ego, I realize you're afraid and I realize you're doing this for self preservation. You see, the ego is an entity into itself. It, it, it really is a self, but it isn't you, you see. And that's the thing that we have to get our heads around. Again, I write extensively about the psychology of this in my book. <clears throat> The ego is an entity unto itself. It is an egregore. It has usurped the body. It runs the body. But what we have to do if we really want to live free lives, we, we have to listen to our higher self. And when we wake up, when we become more conscious, then the higher self will start speaking to us. And then we may want to listen to the higher self if we're not too terrified. Or if we, you know, we don't know what's going on and um, we, we don't take it seriously, anything like this. We have to to listen to our intuition we have to listen to um you know the, the higher level of voices in our head this is you know another very very difficult uh, facet of what it is to be human you see we've got voices in our heads some of us some of us don't have voices in our heads that's a very very curious thing they don't have internal monologues or dialogues isn't that bizarre so if they don't have internal monologues or dialogues they don't have the ego um talking to them telling them what to do um, uh, they don't have the higher self recommending what they should do. And so therefore, they can only be automaton, can't they? And what are automaton? Well, they are like radio-operated drones, uh, which are getting um, operated by the machinations of society, by media, and by the collective consciousness, which um, they're milling between. Then they all hear things from there and take things from there, and they'll just copycat. And that's why we've got the herd mentality, because they're unconscious beings. They're just copycats. They don't have a connection to the higher self. They're not awakened. They're not enlightened, you see. So there's, there's massive differences, people, to um, the, the so-called human being. Uh, I, I, you know, have often asked, what is the human being? How do we define a human being? Where does it begin and where does it end? You know, because we can begin with the body. Some people don't have arms and legs. They're just just a, a, a torso, aren't they? Is that a human being? Some people are deaf and dumb. Some people are, you know, in, in some sort of coma uh, in their lives. Um, is that a real human being? Some people are mentally uh, impaired. Is that a human being? You know, what is a human being, people? Is a low-level conscious uh, person a human being? Or is a high-level conscious person a human being? Where do we draw the lines? Hmm. We can't just say all the all, all, all human beings because it gets very, very vague then, doesn't it? You know, because... Um, if we can't really define what is a human being, uh, then it's just so broad um, and indistinguishable. So, anyway, um, you see, I've just been speaking, I don't know, about 20 minutes, and I've touched on so many massive subjects. Uh, each one of these subjects you could, you could speak for, for years on alone and uh, you know this is what I've done in this past 15 years I, I've been delving into all this stuff uh, incessantly constantly it never ends um, <sighs> so when people look at my videos and I'm ranting and uh, they don't have the stomach for them uh, it's because th they already have a high level of fear within their bodies and if I'm you know being aggressive oh it's too much shrinking violets no because they reflect back to their childhood where they had um, violence in the home and uh, they've been disturbed through violence whether it's mental physical sexual whatever and if, if they watch somebody rah, 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 oh that's the last thing they want to here so they won't hear the message but those of you that um, are not 
um, over, overtly uh, su suppressed um, by the notion of fear and the feeling of fear, you'll sit with it to a degree because you'll think, ah, let me see what the message is in here. Um, you know, maybe you'll think it's funny or, you know, maybe, you know, you just want to look at it and score. And there's lots of people um, that are going to be looking, looking at things for different reasons, people. But uh, for those of you that are not overly sensitive to fear, then you would get through those videos and um, you would see what the message is, maybe if you're uh, intuitive or bright enough, and you'll see what, what is actually going on. And um, so what actually does go on is that I make these videos uh, to shell shock you, the shell shocking tactics people, because uh, I've learned through 15 years of doing these YouTube channels that if I just give you lovey dovey lovey dovey and I say how about your fear? How about your anxiety? Then people are, uh, uh, they're looking for something that their uh, unconscious is seeking out. They're looking for sensationalism and they're looking for the clickbait. And that's why clickbait and sensationalism and faces like Russell Brand on every one of his videos, it's so tiresome. I can't even bear to watch that creep anymore. It's kind of like, come on, mate. You know what you're doing. It's so vile, that sickly, fucking, rudimentary, uh, obnoxious, clickbait bullshit that you're appealing to people's anxiety and fear and, and um, um, interest or whatever. You know, <gasps> It's begun, it's ended, it's started. It's just like, it's, a, it's the lowest. It's the lowest of cheap tactics. And, you know, as um, an intelligent person, which he is, um, you know, I would have thought that he would have just like, um, you know, cut away uh, a, a, a few fucking thousand or half a million viewers uh, that he would attract by those stupid faces and just say to himself, no, I want to keep a le level of integrity and I just want to put down on the video what I'm speaking about. And for those that have the, the, um, the intelligence uh, to be able to see what I've written and have an interest in what I've written, then those people will click on the video instead of all the, oh, it's here, it's coming down. Down on us. Absolutely vile. So um, let me get back then again. I, I, I um, people, you know, you, 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 you probably struggle with, with following me um, if you've not got um, expansive minds, and I get that, you know. But I, I, because my mind is expansive, I, I, I can't just give you five ways to do any fucking thing. I can't do it. it it's just not within me. Uh, th there's a billion ways to do something, and that's what you get from me. You know, you just get an entourage of. Of, of a billion ways uh, coming at you and you know I get it that can be pretty uh, overwhelming but this video where I'm speaking about that your fear has overridden your alter egos it will stop you from living life it will stop you from doing all the things that at the back of your mind one of your spirits is telling you that it might be a good idea to do but you'll find all the reasons on the fucking earth not to do them because of fear <sighs> now then Last night I was speaking to a lady friend of mine who I've known for a good number of years and um, you know we have this platonic relationship where now and again uh, we'll go walking with her dog um, and we'll talk about life and you know she's um, street wise but she's otherwise not intelligent um, in reading and writing and uh, discerning things from books and videos that sort of thing and so she asked me often to help her out with certain things things. She's very, very high uh, stress level. Um, she, she obviously is afraid of a great number of things and um, because of, of her lack of being able to decipher what um, you know people say in books or on videos, you know if they're talking about the intricacies of what it is to be a human being and mental health and all these sort of things, if she can't get her head around that, then of course all that's left is fear. And so she's a very fear-based person, riddled with anxiety. She's going absolutely insane. Um, and when she was speaking to me last night, um, she's all over the place. And um, when I'm advising her like what she wants me to do uh, I will tell her something to do in that situation she goes yeah and I'm like what do you mean yeah 
It's kind of like a yeah, and blah. I could never do that. It's all right for you to say that, but I couldn't do that. I just don't have this, and I don't have that. I said, for goodness sakes, woman, look, every time I'm presenting something, uh, what she should do um, in relation to her health and uh, the benefits that she could receive and, um, you know, the housing allowance and this, that and the other, um, because she's afraid of the government that they wanted to get her to work when she can't work. Uh, she's got all different sorts of health problems. She's got mental problems. She's OCD. She's she's a, she's a fucking mess. But she's terrified of the government. They're gonna tell me. They're gonna not believe me. And they're gonna tell me to do. I must get a job. I don't know how to go onto these uh, sites, Aaron, and look for job. I don't know what you're supposed to do. And all this sort of thing. It, it's a terrifying situation to be in, isn't it? And many people are actually like that. So I was saying to her, look, you know, first and foremost, what you have to do is you have to go to your doctor and you have to explain everything. Yeah, well, like, I went to a doctor and she didn't believe me. And I'm like, oh, come on, girl, look, doctors are not in the fucking business of not believing you when you're talking about your health. So you evidently are projecting something or you're not seeing something. You're not understanding what she was saying or what she was coming from. And um, so my advice is, well, go back and see another doctor. Uh, and, and tell them what you're telling me that you can't do this and you can't do that and you've got crying in your voice and you're terrified of this and you're terrified of that because you are genuinely ill and any doctor that's worth his fucking soul even if they've only just been out of their fucking university for one day they'll be able to see that you've got issues and um, I'm pretty sure because you've seen doctors before it's all written down they wrote stuff down about you. Oh, yeah, probably. No, 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 not probably. If you've been to see a doctor every single time you go there, they're tapping in the, to the fucking computer. Your file, what you're saying to them and what they're saying to you and what they're recommending and prescribing. And so go back to your doctors, ask them to look in your file and see what they can tell you about you. And then you tell them about you, whatever you feel able or appropriate at that time. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, you've got to get rid of this attitude of self-defeating. Yeah. It all comes down to nothing. It all comes down to your nothing. You're stupid. You, 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 you can't do anything. You know, that's your mentality. You, you've got to realise your shot of God consciousness, girl. And that you do have rights and there are institutions, medical institutions and fraternities that are here for people like you. So just go and present yourself to them. And then I said, the next thing that will probably happen is they will recommend to you a company which is called Vitamines. And Vitamines, what's that, she says? I said, look, Vitamines is an institution um, of uh, trained therapists and, and, and um, you know, psychologists. And um, uh, they will call you up and they will give you an hour's consultation and they will assess you. And then they will recommend uh, what variety of therapy they think they need. And then they will allocate a therapist to you and this, that, and the other. She says, oh, What's it called again? I said, Vitamines. She said, oh, Aaron, I'm already on that. I said, what do you mean you're already on it? Uh, I'm already doing it. Uh, I, I, I go and see a therapist once a week. I've been doing it now for four weeks. I've waited two years, um, you know, for this to come around. And now it's here. Oh, my God, this is how my brain is, Aaron. This is why I'm so stupid. I just don't know. And I said, look, it's not like you're stupid, uh, because you're not stupid. I know you're not stupid. I know you're switched on and I know you know and you intuit a lot of things about the world. That's why you have a relationship with me. Because if you were stupid, then, you know, th that wouldn't be happening. So you're not stupid. But what is actually happening is because of your stress levels, because of your internal dialogue, because of your self-defeating attitude, what you're doing is you are creating so much cortisol in your brain and in your body that the cortisol overrides the natural function of your brain so you can't think straight and this is a classic example of anxiety fear terror uh, and that's why when we are terrified or you know we are deeply compromised we've got three choices we can either run uh, we can fight or we'll freeze and so this is the fight or flight syndrome, which Freud coined, you know, 100 years ago. And um, so we can run, we can fight. And another one that Freud, um, you know, never listed uh, is that you know, some people are so terrified they just freeze.
um, and uh, so they won't fight, they won't run, um, you know, just like an animal, you'll see animals when, you know, they are seriously compromised, they'll just, just they'll be as stiff as a board, won't they? Uh, it's the old rabbit in there, car headlight syndrome. Um, so that's what's happening to her mind. And I said, this is what's happening. And I said to her, well, look, you're already doing what you're supposed to do because you've been to see the doctor. And she says, oh, I've not told them about this and I've not told them about that. And I said, well, look, uh, maybe you have, maybe you have. So go and tell them, you know, um, what, what you've been telling me and maybe ask them, what's on record? Have I told you about these things before? Do you know about my OCD? Do you know about my inability to be able to uh, fill in uh, documents because I'm not bright enough? I, I, I just get all super stressed and the, the, the stress overwhelms me and, and I can't fill in the documents that governments are asking me for. You know, and this is why lots of people, they, they have uh, uh, people, um, social workers allocated to them to do their documentation because lots of people that can't read or write or think straight and they don't know what to put down and they probably put a load of stuff down which will be detrimental uh, to themselves getting the benefit and you know there's the, the, the potential danger in stupidity isn't there so um, you know she went away happy momentarily she's always she's always oh sends me text back and uh, I feel a little bit better now thank you and this and the other and it's only ever a little bit better it's never I feel so much better now I, I, I know what I'm doing and I've got my life in order and no it's nothing like that not even remotely it's just uh, I feel a little bit better but by, by the, the, the time her mind is gone uh, you know you, you won't be able to do that and if you do go to the doctors you know they're not going to believe you right they never believed you last time did they and she's gonna be going, yeah, yeah, they didn't believe me last time, yeah, you're probably right. Oh, and all before you know it, the demons in her mind uh, have destroyed her life again. Fear has destroyed her life. And the things about this woman, she, 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 you know, she's 50 years old now, but she's still got, you know, a fine body and she's a good looking woman. And, um, you know, 20 years ago, she, she would have been a stunner. Uh, but, you know, she hasn't had romance in her life for 30 years. Uh, and even then it's only ever been fleeting because she never had the confidence and so she's been a recluse and she's locked herself away like an old spinster because of the shit in her mind tragic and that's what happens and that's what is happening to trillions billions of people on this planet and uh, those fuckers that um, uh, produce all this negative poisonous media they should all be sent to fucking prison uh, for, for, for lengthy um, Sojourns because uh, what they are doing can clinically be proven to be terrorism. They are terrorist institutions. Every single one of these legacy media companies, they're terrorist institutions. And that's all they do. That's the, all their business is. And so when the world finally wakes up, when people like Elon Musk and, and, and Donald Trump are the real fucking true saviors of the world, then that's the first thing that they're going to be addressing. And like Trump, you know, he's bordering on it because he's always going on about fake news, fake news, fake news. So he's on the case. So any of you that think Trump is Satan, well, what part of uh, being a Satanist is that? When he wants to kill these legacy, legacy media, manipulating, lying, propagandist bastards. Yeah, there's nothing satanic about that, people. So, um, you know, you've got to broaden your horizons. You've got to listen carefully. You've got to wise up. Um, so... <sighs> now, another thing is, um, when I put up these ranting videos, lots of people will shy away. Lots of people won't have the stomach for it. I call them the shrinking violets. And I'm not interested in them because they could never come forward. They can never put anything down because they're too terrified, like this lady friend of mine. Uh, oh, if I put this down, oh, if I put that down, oh, you know, and all this sort of stuff. And so that's why invariably you haven't. So um, you're no value to me. I may be of some value to you, and that's great, but you're no value to me. Um, now, one of the viewers uh, said, like, um, so what value do you think uh, those people you call fucking retards have for you? And I'm like, none. 
they don't have any value but by the time I've been sifting uh, out uh, all the shale uh, every now and again I'll find a tiny little speck of gold or a gemstone in there that's of value to me because then I will get uh, some feedback and I will get people you know maybe saying that um, you know they greatly appreciate the videos and they will send me something that I didn't know they'll send me some links they'll awaken me to certain something and you know maybe we'll become plutonic friends maybe we'll become some sort of um, an internet friend or maybe we'll have a chat you know because um, for over the 15 years uh, I've chatted with many many people in the early days when subject matter wasn't anything like as complex as it is now but because now um, I'm I'm in a different dimension the vast majority of people don't know what the fuck I'm talking about and they don't feel confident in, in engaging with me but in the past when I started I was speaking about much more rudimentary things as I was just starting out on my journey now I'm deep I'm balls deep in it now people as many of you will realize and so there's very very few people that are going to be able to engage with me on this subject matter um, but what does happen is when I rattle cages when I risk losing um, any number of subscriber because they have no value to me and if the, 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 the subscriber go I'm unsubscribing because you're a meanie well they're not ready for the things that I've got to impart because um, if anybody is going to be really benefiting from what I'm saying they need to be quite a lot stronger they really do they need to have suffered trauma they need to have suffered the great pain and anguish and terror and this that other and they need now to be in a position whereby they're going to be setting that aside they're going to be overriding that because they are so desirous to solve their issues and to find the fucking truth and see the light they're the people that I can help they're the people that I want they're the people that have already got a, a grounding and a basis to their personal development not the, the love and lighters and the candle stick fucking crystal lighters and all that you know what I'm saying not those people um, they, they'll be terrified of the things that I'm presenting to them because what we have to do on this journey we have to confront terror uh, on a daily basis you know there's many times when I will start to read new books or I'll start to discover something new on the channel and my ego will ask me do I want to know that how deep do I want to go because it's potentially very disturbing and I'm like it is what it is you know, and it's like David Icke says, he never shy away from anything because he wants to know the truth. And so, you know, he's looked into all the occult stuff and all the demonic stuff and everything, you know, like all these true truth seekers have. We have to look into the dark, people. There's no way can we just keep heading for the fucking light. That's a fantasy. We have to confront the darkness and we have to confront it within our own minds and our own bodies. And we have to do this um, in solitary, if at all possible. And, um, you know, when we have the facility of being in solitary confinement, forced solitary confinement when there is only you and all the demons all around well you've got to dig fucking deep in my book I speak about this I speak about a whole bunch of things and you know it, it, it I don't know you know I suppose the book sales, uh, the book um, acquisitions um, are, you know, are doing pretty well because out of the 300 regular viewers I've got on my channel, a uh, hundred of you uh, is in possession of that book. And that's a third. That has to be a very high percentage. It really does. And so whatever I'm doing here, um, presenting my information to you and, and pointing you in the direction of the book, if you want to get a bigger picture about these subjects, uh, then it, it's obviously working to a degree. Um, but, you know, it could always work better. And so uh, my advice, if you have £20 that you wouldn't miss, buy the fucking book. Now, when I do these rants and when people do have uh, the ability, um, the strength to be able to sit through them without calling me every cunt under the sun because they, their ego is buying uh, what they're projecting onto me. Oh, he just thinks he's so great. He just thinks, he's, oh, Mr. Wonderful. Oh, you're better than everybody else. I say all these things to give you the opportunity to say, actually, Aaron, 
um, I know a thing or two, you know. Uh, I've had a few experiences, you know, because that's what happens. Um, by the time um, I've, uh, you know, called you every stupid idiot under the sun, some of you who have liked my videos and do like my videos and benefit from the videos, you may just start to think that what he really wants is for people like me to engage with him. Because he's been saying this for fucking ever. And that's why he calls us idiots and dumb folks, because we don't engage. So, oh, I don't usually do this, it's not really my thing, but I'm going to do this. And that's what you say. You tell me that you don't usually do this, this is probably the only channel or one of the channels that you'll comment on. So I've worked for you and you're now working for me. And then you will send me stuff uh, and then sometimes, you know, you'll say, OK, let's do a chat. Very rarely, but at least if you send me stuff uh, and you write me an email or something like that, then I know a little of who's out there and who's watching my videos and it makes it a whole lot easier if I've got a little bit of a fucking echo coming back, you know? But if I'm just screaming out onto a fucking ocean and there's nothing to reflect my fucking uh, voice back, then I don't get any echo, do I? And I'm just screaming into the wilderness. And uh, that's why, you know, my ego uh, gets uh, somewhat frustrated. But then people will say to me, well, if you're really awoken and really spiritual, then why does it bother you? Well, because Spirit has given me a job to do. It's told me that I've got to try and raise the fucking dead. And so it didn't tell me that. I've, me, Cosmos, have blessed you, awake and brave, with the wisdom of the Cosmos. And just bask in it, just enjoy it, you don't need to do anything about it. No, because wisdom and knowledge doesn't work like that. Guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, friends and foes, it really doesn't. Wisdom is something that has to be imparted. And when people have it, they have to share it. That's a fucking natural law of the Cosmos. It really is. And so knowledge is the same. If you have knowledge and you don't share it uh, with your fellow men, you know, if, if you don't put it out into the Akasha uh, where other people can download it, then I don't think things are going to fare well for you because you're going against the natural laws of the cosmos. And so I'm doing my job, which I'm compelled to do, which is to keep learning, 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 reading, 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 and then imparting. That's what I'm doing. So what does that make? me what does that make this vessel it makes it a portal from cosmic consciousness to you pink apes but what do I get out of it? What I get out of it, I get a blissful state of mind, a very healthy body, and an absolute stillness, which is heaven, which is ecstasy, which is probably what all these gurus have ever been speaking about all their lives. Uh, th this natural state of the human being in a perfect blissful way. That's how my body is. That uh, I don't feel any aches and pains or anxieties or traumas, or uh, I don't have these... Uh, nasty, evil, negative, repetitive thoughts going around my head. My mind is pure. Unless I want to speak about something, unless I'm being um, downloaded, like, you know, now, for instance, uh, the universe says to me, OK, turn the camera on, you know, don't worry about what you're going to say, leave it to us. And that's it. Because what the universe has done, what the cosmos has done, it, it, it sent me on a path, a trajectory um, of learning all these different sorts of stuff. And it's given me the, the endowment of being able to put all this stuff together and to 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 uh, archive it and um, to be able to retrieve it you know very very efficiently I can do all this stuff I can do it very very well and so that's why the cosmos had chose me to deliver stuff to you now as to why the cosmos um, hasn't forwarded to me um, 10 million viewers instead of 300 viewers I've got no idea um, probably because I would find it too overwhelming because uh, a channel this size, can you imagine? You know, if you read every comment and you, if you, out of courtesy, a reply to the comments, a little or a lot, uh, is time consuming. And what I'm doing now, speaking for about an hour, then, you know, Cosmos uh, compels me at some stage to listen to it back. Uh, so that's another hour. And then I'll put it up and then, you know, I'll be engaged in the comments and this, that, and the other. It's time consuming, people. And then I've got to learn stuff, um, you know, to speak about. So, so um, that's how it is. So when people realise what's going on here, when they've got cosmic consciousness and they can see 
the cosmic light working through me, then they too will feel uh, a pang of, of, of conscience and, and guilt, and um, they, they too will have to do the right thing. They too will have to go, oh, no, I don't normally do this, but you know, in this instance, I've just got to. And so you do. So that's why I make those videos, people. And um, what normally happens is by the time I've made those videos, uh, all of a sudden loads of people commenting and thumbs up and, you know, they're realising what I say is cool, but then they all fall back to sleep again. Within two weeks, they've all gone back to sleep. So then I have to do it again, I have to do it again, I have to do it again. But um, in recent times, um, let's say less in less than one month, uh, the subscribers have gone up by about 50. So 50 subscribers uh, in one month. Well, that's unprecedented because um, the trajectory of my subscribers has been very, very slow and long. And uh, in recent times, it's really took quite a hike. Um, and so... Um, one of the videos I put up where I said you are supernatural beings, well that's got I think over 2,000 hits. It's got the, the highest hits of any of my videos and probably lots of the um, subscribers came from that one video. Um, and then when I look at uh, the, the amazing, enormous rants, uh, well, uh, on that day and on the day after, uh, I lost two subscribers, but then gained about 30. And so I have to know that what I'm doing uh, is correct. The numbers state that it's correct. The views, the, the, the engagement, the comments, the thumbs up, uh, everything, it, it, it just starts to launch. It, in a positive direction. Now, there are facets of um, my ego when I'm blustering uh, uh, and I'm doing all this. You know, uh, if I was thin enough skin, then I would be embarrassed myself. But uh, I'm used, we are used to, to having that spirit on board. That spirit has been on board with me all of my life. And I've never extricated it. I've never banished it because it serves me. It's very, very powerful. It's took me all around the world. It's given me an enormous amount of experience. Um, that facet of my ego which, which enables me to feel like I am God and I am king and nobody could ever tell me or manipulate me or do anything like that and uh, nobody could ever harm me because I'm protected so that's what gives me that that's what gives me the ability uh, the ability ability to be able to do whatever I'm doing and done whatever I've done okay so any of you that think oh ego you, you completely um, you know delusional about what the ego is um, and so when I look at um, those videos and there is a part of me which says like mmm well lots of people are not gonna understand you they're gonna come onto your channel they're not gonna understand what you're doing Aaron and I'm like well it was spirit that enabled um, that facet um, of spirit to project whatever it was because you know that I, I i just go into some sort of channeling don't i that's what i do i'm never ever ever stuck for words i i never you know um say anything that 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 is is wrong i it, it, it just comes out i don't have to correct myself i don't have to edit my videos i just don't have to do any of that stuff um it, it just is what it is and it, it's got a level of perfection as far as spirit's concerned as far as spirit tells me so that's why i don't need to do any of that stuff um so these uh, spirits within me, um, the ones that I have accepted and I've embraced and I know that work for me, because uh, even though some people could go, oh, I couldn't even get 30 seconds through that disgusting video, you're a narcissist, you're an idiot, and this, that, and the other, I will say to them, well, just look at the figures, just look at the numbers. That's what I'm saying to you because I think you're missing something. Just look at the numbers. And when I tell you that there has been two subscribers lost since that video and 50 gained, well, there's, there's something in it, isn't there? And so whoever thinks that that video is obnoxious and painful to watch and this and that, you might just want to go back and watch it again. And you might want to look and listen and feel to what's happening within your body, in your mind, because they're the things that you should be working on. Huh? 
Yeah, you've got to ask yourself why you're feeling so, oh, you know, why is it that you just can't listen to it? You, you can't watch me. Why? You know, what is it? There's something that's frail within you. There's something that's suffering within you. There's something that would feel the ramifications of that level of energy uh, because you, you can't receive that level of energy. You see, at the end of the day, that was energy, people. And you know that I have a massive amount of energy and I can deliver it in many different forms. But when it comes in that form, you're upset. But when it comes in another form, most of you don't recognize it. Like when I'm speaking about your fear, your anxiety, your emotions, uh, things that you should be fucking looking at. You're on my channel, so Spirit has sent you to my channel. So it's about time you started listening to Spirit and you start listening to what the videos are saying. And stop cherry picking, uh, stop allowing your ego to cherry pick, stop allowing your fear to step over the ones uh, that it just doesn't want to be presented with. Because those those are the ones that you need to listen to. Wow. If I have more viewers, people, I will be absolutely inundated. Uh, there's no doubt about that. You know, people will be calling me to travel all over the fucking world because how I present things with the energy and with with the the, the you know the information um, and the charisma and all that different sorts of stuff. Jordan Peterson w would pale into insignificance alongside me. The only thing that Peterson would have um, on me, he has a deeper clinical insight because he's been a practicing um, clinical psychologist. Um, you know, fucking, well, he was a practicing one for 25 years, but he's been one in his mind, you know, all of his life, really. He has all of his life. Um, and so, you know, he is a very deep and thorough thinker, but um, he misses a lot of the, the spiritual uh, metaphysics physical stuff because he's too involved in ego and too involved in the physical world and that's why he's trying to interpret the Bible um, with the, 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 the human uh, ego and, and p p pertaining to the physical world uh, when you know if, if that book e e is anything other than a pack of lies um, it, it, it's, it's a spiritual book and so it's encouraging people to think spiritually uh, but it, Peterson hasn't worked that one out yet. He just thinks it's all rationally and all logically and all egotistically. So this is why I will put myself up against Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, do you want to come for a chat? It won't ever happen because Peterson said last night uh, on an interview that um, his team, he's got like 15 people working for him, vetting, you know, and filtering uh, all of the people that he should speak to. And one of the major um, uh, criteria uh, is the money, of course. So he says, well, why would I want to speak with someone, you know, that's only going to pay me half? So he's very, very much into it for the money, isn't he? So when we, you know, some of you get to thinking he's the saviour and he's doing it for mankind, well, he wears billion dollar suits, you know, he lives in a billion dollar house and, you know, he's got a billion dollar bank account. And so if he was doing it for the benefit of man, then you would have heard about him setting up charities all over the place with the copious amounts of money he's got. But no, he isn't, is he? He's just spending, you know, obscene amounts of money on pure silk suits and all the rest of it. So um, get your head around Jordan Peace and people. Uh, there you have it. Enough said, yeah. <laughs>